This is Adam Ellick reporting from Islamabad. It is, does not make sense. Why would the United States want to have such kind of conspiracies against Pakistan? When a Pakistani American tried to blow up Times Square last month, people here in Pakistan held an entirely different view of the same event. People are going to be arguing that the Americans have staged this whole thing. It may be a planted uh, matter against the Pakistan. If Al-Qaeda or Taliban were involved in this entire situation, I think they wouldn't leave uh, the car keys or any signs, any footprints in the mm. car, and the car would have really gone off. In most of the world, these conspiracies are the stuff of fringe. But in Pakistan, they make for mainstream television. A lot of anti-Pakistan forces that would like to see Pakistan in the dock. Because they are against uh, our nuclear assets. To force Pakistan military to move into North Waziristan, something the Americans have been desiring for quite some time. What's fueling this? What one sees is denial at practically every stage. Pakistan Pervez Hudboy is a liberal academic who's often cast as an American spy on television. Now what has happened is that Pakistan's failures are manifest, but they're being blamed onto, onto the world outside. And who better to blame than the Americans? As America bids for the hearts and minds in Pakistan, television talk shows are demonizing the United States for having meddled in the region for decades, and most recently for staging Faisal Shahzad as the Times Square bomber. Shahzad is, is a big deal in Pakistan. Adnan Rehmat's a media analyst. We've got more Fox TV than the U.S. has. Eight years ago, Pakistan had only one TV news channel. Now there's 26, and their viewers are the educated urban elite, people like Faisal Shahzad. His financial condition was not very good. His financial situation wasn't very good, so it's not difficult to prey upon such an individual and trap him. And all of this could be an attempt to frame him. U.S. officials acknowledge the problem. We're not getting through. We're not being very effective, and that's our fault. We are not communicating very effectively to the people of Pakistan. Richard Holbrook, the U.S. Special Envoy to Afghanistan and Pakistan. Holbrook's first press conference in Pakistan lasted a full 14 minutes, and he took only two questions. I'm sorry, we are going to leave, so I please... Have a couple more questions. Excuse Excuse me. Me. Well, then we'll leave now, if you don't want to let me make one last statement. It was bizarre. I, I can't believe the U.S. doesn't understand you know, uh, the importance of protocol. Holbrook comes here, General Petraeus comes here, Mullen comes here, McChrystal comes here. They never talk to the media. With many questions left unanswered by the U.S. delegation. And the media is going to say, here's another American who's secretive. I would shudder to tell you some of the things that the, the journalists believe. They are not ready to believe that 9-11 was uh, masterminded by Osama bin Laden. Even more moderate talk show hosts like Hamid Mir are frustrated by America's approach. Madam Hillary Clinton, she gave an interview to four or five anchors. I was one of them. This parliament adopted unanimous resolution against U.S. drone attacks. But the U.S. drone attacks have increased a lot. You don't yes. respect our parliament. We are in the middle of a war, number one, which colors everything. And we have to maintain democracy which is essential. And that is that is our goal. We want to win the war and we want to support democracy. She never gave a clear answer. We don't uh, see any statements from the American officials. U.S. officials here have been largely silent on the Times Square case. And that alone has heightened suspicions among the cable TV generation. Truly, my opinion is it's a government set up inside the government from the American government. At the only cinema in the Pakistani capital region, Young people are unconvinced that terrorism's homegrown. I don't know if they have their origins from Pakistan. So we're not sure about that. Conspiracies are also prevalent in national newspapers, which are read by older Pakistanis. This paper ran a front page story of a photoshopped image stating that New York subway is targeting Pakistanis. Highly mistaken this American nation. At the Supreme Court Bar Association, lawyers blame American think tanks for the failed bomb. There are think tanks working in America. They prepared some script. They caught the vehicle, mm -hmm. just giving some smoke. 
it may be because of their radiator was maybe without water these type of conspiracies have been popularized by tv icons like zaid hamid we are either hated or loved fanatically with fervent nationalism mr hamid mobilized pakistan's depressed youth against american policy we want to be left alone as free people like every american would want to be every texan would want to be in any other country he would be locked up behind bars for inciting violence pleasure to welcome you on this show thank you very much it's an honor to be here. his highly rated tv show ended this month now mr hamid appears on other talk programs and publishes books and dvds his facebook page is pakistan's third most popular his followers celebrity musicians and fashion designers with the magical words and wisdom of mr zaid hamid <laughs> What does he think of the Times Square bomb? The first reaction was suspicion. Here we go again. And especially the fact that later on the information came that he had been buying firecrackers from a shop. No terrorist in the world has ever been able to blow up anything from firecrackers. It was Hillary Clinton that gave a fillip to uh, the conspiracy theorists. Hillary giving these ridiculous nonsensical statements. Right. These are shameless statements. If heaven forbid uh, an attack like this that we can trace back to Pakistan uh were to have been successful uh there would be very severe consequences we are a muslim nation nuclear powered 170 million we are not iraq we are not afghanistan we are ruthless and we fight back but we want to live with dignity but when the time comes we'll die with honor that americans should understand <laughs>